I want to take a look at some acid-base chemistry this morning in a little bit of a different manner. I'm going to uh, have an acid-base reaction take place in here, but I'm going to start with some distilled water. And I'll tell you, for my students, this is the best part. How do you do that? It's magic. So I've got some water in here. This is milk of magnesia. It's not that brand that you see on the shelf, but Flynn makes good milk of magnesia. Milk of magnesia is magnesium hydroxide. I have calibrated goggles, so I'm going to measure exactly 22.37 seven, oh, seven milliliters of magnesium hydroxide in there. Kick up the stirring. If I put just a little bit of the milk of magnesia in just a beaker, clearly not very soluble. But, and if we can go over to the board, we can talk about this. <clears throat> I'm going to try to neutralize the magnesium hydroxide, but here is the equation for dissolving magnesium hydroxide in water. Magnesium hydroxide is not very soluble. This equilibrium lies well to this side. But despite the fact that it's not soluble, we say magnesium hydroxide is a strong base because any that does dissolve is completely separated into ions. So we want to be able to trace the reaction And first, we're going to do that by looking at color. This is universal indicator. It'll give me a pH range anywhere from about 3 or 4 with red up to purple. And we have a little chart on the side that comes with every bottle. It tells me that if the pH is up over 10, effectively, I'm going to have a purple color. I have a purple color. That's due to the hydroxide ions that are in the solution. This is hydrochloric acid. This happens to be 3 molar. What I'm going to do is shoot this into here a little bit at a time, and let's take a look at what happens. Watch the uh, colors on this as I shoot the hydrochloric acid in. What happened here? Back to the board. The reaction between hydrogen and hydroxide ions is about as fast a reaction as we can measure. If they're both there, that's going to happen. So the first thing we saw was that the hydroxide, hydroxide ion that was already in solution immediately got neutralized, as shown by the red color, by the hydrogen ion to the point that there was an excess of hydrogen ion present. That was the red. You saw it then work its way back through green and blue, back to purple. So now more of the magnesium hydroxide has dissolved. If you want to talk about Le Chatelier's principle, there's a great example. Shift this equilibrium to the right because the hydroxide that was there got consumed. As we've gone on doing this demonstration, we've thought, well, it might be fun to see if we can get a little technology into this. This is the latest inter interface from uh, the Vernier people. It's called LabQuest. 
You can do what I'm about to do with any other form of technology you have. Basically, you need a pH probe. I just happen to have one. So I'm going to clamp that in place. I'm going to come around and start this running. Hardest thing for me is to find the cursor. Once I do that, I'm home free. OK. I'm going to do the same thing I just did. What are you reading? 10.14. I want to have a good vortex here. Here comes the acid. And we're just about back to purple. So what we saw was the pH drop down and drop back up. We kind of have a, a chart over here that illustrates a different run, obviously. But I shoot the acid in, immediately the pH drops. Then as the magnesium hydroxide dissolves, the pH comes back up. And we work our way back to, again, an alkaline system. Let's do it again. My thumb is calibrated too. That's how I know I get exactly the same amount of hydrochloric acid every time. You know, we joke about these things and we say, when you have a reaction like this. On a molecular level, this is fascinating. If you think about it, the fact that we've got this pH probe here is kind of letting us see what is happening on a molecular level. As that pH curve goes back up, we can interpret that the magnesium hydroxide is redissolving. Let's do a couple more. Kind of important as we're doing this to let it get back to that level point each time. So I'm I'm watching here what you're seeing up there. Notice that it's taking longer and longer to get back to the purple. I'm reaching I'm gonna reach a point eventually which all the magnesium hydroxide has been converted to magnesium chloride paired up with the chloride ions that I'm injecting here. Here we go again. Ooh. This has always been one of my favorite demonstrations, but adding this to it just really makes it nice. Okay, we're just about back to as purple as we're gonna get. Have we hit? Oh. Well, pretty green, so pretty neutral, but it's turning blue. And, well, I suppose one more. How are we doing here, guys? Notice how the curve is rising more gently now. I'm right at equivalence point. I 
think we're getting about to the end. So we're only getting up to about pH 9 so far. So we've got a little bit of an excess of hydroxide, but not much. I'm watching for it to level off. Tell me this is the best I can do. And then I'm going to finish it. Did you hear me say I was waiting for you to level off? <laughs> Would you do that, please? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. You always talk to your reagents. You let them know that you're on their side. Okay, final, final, guys. Crank this up. And it's red. Yeah. I finally cured my upset stomach. <laughs> oh, actually, no. It's acidic again. Drat. Well, I'll just have to go get some more. Great demonstration. Lots of colors. Even if you don't use the, uh, the interface, the pH meter, whatever you have, just the, seeing the rainbow of colors is fun. Go that little bit further, particularly if you're teaching an advanced class or an honors class or an AP class, an IB class. You can get a lot of chemistry out of this. AP teachers, there's the first question on the AP free response. Right there. It's called uh, Mom to the Rescue, Mom and Technology. It's milk and magnesia neutralized by hydrochloric acid. Great demo, lots of fun to do. Kids love it.